what we'll start off with here is just basically a, a list, kind of, kind of the, the main laundry list of the changes that we wanted to take a look at. Um, issues like we wanted to change and, and add delta pump options for the Permix S and C, uh, make it as a, sta a standard offering in what we do. Upgrade the PC pumps in the in the M systems to use stainless steel rotors to give us a little bit more reliability in those units. Um, giving some flexibility in mounting where the diaphragm pumps and the and the hose pumps are on the Promix S and C systems as well as the M systems. Uh, some customers were looking for flooded suction applications as opposed to a suction lift application, so we uh, we wanted to try to address those things. Replacing brass check valves with PVC check valves. Something as simple as the plastic to metal interface was uh, was causing some customers some issues. You've got a threaded connection there that would uh, give you some leakage issues. Plus, we've got a little bit of cost savings we can we can bring back in that. Um, introducing a newer inject injection check valve for the polymer system. Uh, increasing motor sizes for all of the mixers. Uh, we, we experienced a few instances where the the concentration being made in the chamber exceeded the horsepower capabilities of those motors. So we, we took a look at those issues. Um, in, increasing the dilution water line sizes as well as the standpipe diameters, giving a little bit better flow through that whole system. Being able to get a little bit more dilution water through, a little bit less resistance, the system can work better because it doesn't have to work quite as hard. Uh, eliminating some of the jumpers and, and other inner things inside the controller that needed to be modified when the systems were first put in. Minimizing the need for an operator to go in and make any modification to the inside of the control panel just to get a system up and running. Uh, we wanted to look at some allowances to do manic polymers. Being able to handle that particular polymer type in a fairly simple change via the controls. Uh, better op our configurations for flushing. We wanted to look at uh, Checking, be able to check water flow on the uh, on the chamber because the chamber does an initial fill. We want to make sure that we're getting water in so the seals are getting wet so that we're not going to have any seal failure issues. Uh, we wanted to simplify the, the hand controls, being able to have an operator walk up to that unit and be able to make the modifications he wanted to make very quickly to troubleshoot a unit and not have to do a lot through the menus. He could actually do some, some basic changes via switches. Um, I swear in this long list of things we ran into, there was a request for cup holders on this thing. There was a lot of changes that people were asking for. So, you know, one more thing on the list. It was a very long laundry list of items that we wanted to take a look at. So I guess the question would then be is, is what have we changed? What have we gotten into? One of the first things that uh, we took a look at was modifying how that chamber is designed. Uh, the chambers on the S and the C and the M were all looked at and they were all updated in this new design. Uh, m most of the changes are actually isolated to the top top cap of those chambers. You'll see in this photo that this is the, the top cap from the Prumix M system. Those silver elbows that you'll see on the top are actually threaded stainless steel street elbows. So as we're taking a stainless steel thread threaded elbow into a PVC cap on this chamber, we had to deal with taping the threads, we had some potential inter interferences of trying to rotate that elbow right next to the motor flange, which you might get a little bit of interference with. Uh, maintenance guys who wanted to do any kind of work on these units in the field had to deal with those interferences, the tight, tight spaces that they were dealing with. The green cylinder actually is the uh, injection valve, the polymer injection valve. It too was threaded. So if somebody wanted to remove that injection valve to do any kind of maintenance work on it, it is the one item on there that tends to need the most maintenance because of polymer buildup in there or they get a, a bad batch of polymer tends to plug it up. They had to unthread that. Well, that valve is connected to tubing. So if you tried to unscrew it, tubing would twist. They would have a difficult time getting it open. So you had to get tubing loose first before you could do any work on the valve. The Bromic C was even worse. We crammed, because of the smaller real estate we had available, we had all three of those connections right next to each other, very tight. It was difficult for our guys to build it. They had to get things in in a very specific order. They still had to deal with threading in a metal fitting into a plastic top. If you thread it too much, you run the risk of cracking the plastic. We've got a few of those issues you got to deal with. So the solution was to modify how that top was built. We moved the water inlet and the polymer made down polymer outlet to the sides of the chamber freed up some space on the top of that chamber. 
So the only thing on the top is, is the actual polymer injection pool. Now the inlets and outlets and the polymer injection point are all utilizing a twist lock configuration for the valves, for those connections. What that does is it gives an operator a much easier way of getting those fittings in and out if they're doing any kind of maintenance on the units. So what you'll actually see, and I'll show you the twist lock here. So what you'll actually see in this uh, brief animation is we'll, we'll show you an example of the injection valve itself. You'll see an operator, all they have to do is back off the two screws that are holding that lock, that twist lock in place. They back it off about a half a turn. And that entire valve comes out because it's only held in there after, at that point via some O-rings, via some O-ring seals. So you'll see the screws actually rotate. That twist lock assembly just turns very simply lifts up and that entire valve can lift out of, the, out of the head of the chamber. Very simple. An operator has a real easy way of getting to this valve, which tends to be one of his big maintenance points. He can get it out, he can do whatever work he needs to do, he can get it back installed and get a system up and running within minutes. As opposed to having to go in and try to unthread it, disconnect a bunch of things to get to get, be able to get in and actually do some of that maintenance. The way that operates is exactly the same as the, the water inlet and the polymer outlet connection here as well. So if the customer wants to do a little bit of work and they need to get into there and make some modifications, it's easy to get those connections changed. The polymer injection valve itself was modified. It was updated to give us a little bit more robust design. Additionally, it's a little bit more maintenance friendly too. Uh, the actual internals of the valve can be removed with simple hand tools. So once a, cut, a, a maintenance guy has actually pulled this valve out of the system, it may be still be connected to the tubing that he has connected to his pump. But he can take the end off of it, he can get access to the internals of that valve, do any cleaning he needs to do, and get it back in the service very quickly. He's got a real simple way of doing work on the one item that he tends to have to deal with the most. One of the additional changes we made was we updated how the stands were designed. We tried to make them a little bit more versatile, give a little bit more commonality across the designs as well. So you've got uh, some, some use in other applications or in the same application with some slight modifications. <clears throat> One of the additional benefits is we now have the ability to do stainless steel house skids in-house. So we can actually build the stands for the end systems in-house, giving us a little bit more better control on the on the product itself, driving out a little bit of cost, we've got a lot of more benefit out of it. If you look at the Promix S system, which we're showing here, you'll see on the right-hand side of that skid, there are two cutouts for the inlets and outlets for those systems. Um, so primarily your, your water inlet, your polymer outlet, and your polymer inlet, and your made down polymer outlet are all on that right-hand side of the skid. On the left-hand side of the skid, there's comparable openings. It's quite easy to actually rotate that piping around and have it coming out the opposite side if that's what the application calls for. Uh, advantage to this also is if you have a customized skid, we have a little bit more freedom in a customized polymer stand using a standard skid and keeping some of our pricing and costing a little bit more competitive because we're using a standard item that we use instead of a custom package. We have a little bit more flexibility in that. The Promix M stands. What we actually wound up doing is using the same basic stand configuration for either a diaphragm pump or a progressive cavity pump. Because we're only designing one stand as basic, and building one stand, we can stock a little bit better. We're not having to worry about some of the flexibility we need. We're using the same componentry. There's additional flexibility in the fact that a delta pump system that goes out in the field that a customer ultimately finds out is too small for their application can be easily retrofitted to a PC pump because you've already got the space available on the skid, including the mounting location of the head pump. So you've got some flexibility in there for a customer. Um, you can handle a larger control panel on the same skid. So we've got the provision to mount, and maybe if a customer wants to upgrade controls at some point in time, they've got the capability of doing so. Or if it's a custom skid that needs a, bit, a different control panel, but we can still utilize the same standard skid because the features are still there. We've given a little bit more flexibility in those systems. 
some of the controls improvements that we took a look at. Um, we made sure that we had selectable start-stop configurations right on the front of the box. So we now have two control uh, switches located on the front of the, of the controller. The first is the local off and remote connection. And that basically says, how is this system going to start running? Is it going to look for a remote signal? Is it going to look for a local signal? Is it in a hand position? An operator can run that unit, troubleshoot it right there at the off the controller. So that's our easy way of telling where the, the start signal is coming from. Then we also designate where is the remote signal, the control signal coming from. The 4 to 20 milliamp signal that's going to come in and drive this unit. It can be driven remotely at the control box, or it can be looking for a remote signal coming from a customer's DCS. If an operator is trying to troubleshoot this unit, he may want to put it into a hand mode that he can fully control it and not be dependent on trying to get a hold of his control room to change and update and slow down the system to match what he's trying to do for troubleshoot. Built into the menu of, this, of the controller, we added the ability to do manic polymers. So if a customer is going to put a package into a manic polymer application, he can easily go in, set it for manic, and the, the control scheme for the concentrations is automatically updated, as opposed to dealing with a 1% max con concentration in the chamber, which is normal on a emulsion polymer. We can actually go up to 10% concentration for manic polymer. So he's got the ability to make that modification right then and there, right on the control. And then on the, uh, the more advanced controller for the end units, you actually have the ability to switch between batch and inline operation. Um, one of the things we changed a little bit was we had, a, we had two controller configurations. Available. One was a A controls, one was a B controls. And what we really have determined was A controls and B controls didn't tell anybody a lot about what those functions really did. So the terminology has been updated a little bit. Uh, a controls has been replaced by the terminology of an inline control. In other words, a system that is operating online with a package of equipment that you may be feeding polymer into. So it's going to turn on and off as this other equipment runs, and it's going to be on on-demand kind of system. What was B controls is now batch controls, meaning somebody's going to make down a tank full of a polymer at a particular concentration, and then they're going to use it, and it's going to make it up in batches. And that's how the batch controller operates. As we did the updates and controls, we found that it was a fairly simple matter of doing a batch controller that could also do the inline control features. So it's a customer selectable feature if they want to go that route. What that actually means is with all those simple control combinations that you're seeing right there, a batch controller on an M system can actually be configured in 16 different ways to meet whatever their application requirement might be. So you've got a lot more flexibility as far as how that goes into a system and how the customer can be it. Some of the additional changes we made to the, uh, the Chromex SNC. Addressing some of those questions that we had. Mounting the neat polymer pump, high or low. We now have the ability to mount that pump in either a high or low location. The standard coming out of the factory will be a low location. Customer specifically requested will mount it at a high location. If a customer wants to modify it in the field, it's a very th easy thing to do the way it's configured. You can actually move the shelf mounting that pump very easily. We've increased the horsepower for the motors on all the mixers in the Promix SNC. We did this actually as part of a, uh, an interim change last year trying to address a few issues where people running very high concentration inside the chamber were overloading the motors. We've upgraded that horsepower significantly, upgraded the, the motor starters and the overloads inside the panel to address those as well. So we've got a much more robust, reliable mixing capability in these chambers. We upgraded the dilution water check valves, changed them to PVC from brass, so we got away from those metal to plastic interfaces that were sometimes a problem. Saved a little bit of cost in there as well. By like being able to go to a PVC valve, we've saved a little bit of the expense of, uh, of the brass valve. Increased the piping diameter for better flow. This also includes the, the down tube inside the chamber. Uh, the original system had some sections of piping that were half inch. Everything on this package is now a three quarter inch pipe system better overall flow, get a little bit more flow through the system. The whole system works a little bit easier. On the Promix M, we had some comparable improvements. If you're using the diaphragm pump, 
in the design on the Pro Mix M. You can mount it in a higher or low position. You don't have that option on the PC pump. The PC pump just due to its size, fits on the base. That's usually not a problem, but you've got the, uh, the ability to move the diaphragm pump around. We upgraded the PC pumps to incorporate stainless steel rotors. This was to address some issues where a few customers had, had deadheaded a few of these pumps in the field and actually had snapped the Kynar rotors that we were previously using. Uh, made the upgrade to the stainless rotors, give us a little bit uh, tougher pump, able to handle some of those uh, upset conditions. Like the S and the C, we upgraded the motor horsepower on the mixer to address those high viscosity applications when you're running a very high concentration inside the chambers. Uh, got to help get to this point so we can get away from some of those nuisance motor trip issues that we're running into. Also changing the dilution water check valves from uh, brass to PVC as well on the end, like we did on the S and C. Increase the piping chambers. If it worked on the S and C, might as well do it on the uh, on the M as well. So that all the M piping has been increased to one inch as opposed to three quarter inch. And because we moved the PC pump from the back of the skid behind all the other equipment to over onto the side, it's much better maintenance access. We've had a couple of customers come back and say maintenance guys didn't like the fact that that uh, pump was located where they couldn't get to it if they needed to do any kind of service work on it. Now with all the challenges that come about, we had, to, we had to deal with a few of the things that we needed to address a few of the things that come about after we go through all of these updates we put into the systems. Um, just want to point out a few things that uh, keep in mind when you realize that these are some of the consequences that come about of making a bunch of changes. The main which most of the systems grew in size. It may be as much as just a couple inches in a few directions, but to incorporate some of the flexibility we wanted to do in the systems uh, to add in bigger motors, what wind up being a little bit bigger controls, all of those things. By necessity, we had to get a little bit bigger in all of our systems. Not much we can do about it. Uh, certain features you have are going to just take up more space. Uh, I think we've, we've countered that by a lot more of the features and the sellable features that we put into these systems. On the systems using the progressive cavity pumps, the Promix M systems with the PC pumps on them. They have a cost increase. The stainless steel rotor primarily is the, is the big driver right there. That rotor adds a significant amount of cost to the pump itself. Consequently, the system itself has to get a little bit more expensive. But in turn, you get a very robust pump. You don't have to worry about a maintenance issue on the pump as opposed to a, a, the old Kynar rotor systems. With all those changes, all of the upgrades, all the new features that we put in there, there's going to be some moderate price increases. All of which stay within, well within the market. We did a little research to find out where our competition is with a lot of these things. And one of the things I would point out is a lot of the features that we're putting in here that are now standard are options for a lot of our customers or competition. So a lot of our competitors may look at a PC pump and go in and say, yeah, you want the stainless steel rotor, there's going to be a 2000 or added for that. It's a standard option for us. So it's it's no more of uh, having it, you got to want to make sure that you're competing apples to apples with a competitor on some of these options. So then the question becomes how did we do? If we go back to that list that we had at the beginning of the, the presentation. How do we do on all of these items that we're taking a look at? The delta pump option on the SNC. Got it covered. Stainless rotor on the PC pumps. Being able to half mount your uh, diaphragm or hose pumps high or low, depending on the application requirements. We've got that covered. Changing the check valve pumps to PVC, giving us a little bit better reliability in the valve and a little bit lower cost. Updating the injection valve for all the polymer systems, all taken care of. Increasing motor sizes with all the mixers done on all the systems. Increasing all of the dilution water sizes our systems actually work a little bit more efficiently. All taken care of. Standpipe diameter included. Eliminate the need for jumpers in the controls. Operators no longer have to open the box to make a tweak inside that box when they first receive the unit or if they're trying to do any maintenance work or, or troubleshoot. We have allowances for manic polymer use. 
got a uh, better configuration of a flush. The operator actually can initiate flushes whenever he wants. He's got a couple options on how to do so. He can change timing. There's a lot more flexibility in that in that uh, circuit for this and those controls. The controller actually checks for water on startup. Make sure that we're getting good fill on the chamber before we actually initiate turning the mixer on so we don't have to worry about seal failures. And the customer has a very good hand control capability right on the face of the box. However, if we talk about more cup holders, we fell a little short of the mark. But we're already talking about Permix third generation. We've already started a list of those things that we're going to add in there. So I'll put cup holders at the top of that list right now. We will take a look and, and see, and as, as we go and as we move forward, we'll use our PIR process, our incident report process, we have field reports. Those are all things that we're going to use as far as new upgrades and changes, new improvements we want to do. And we're already starting to look at those. So uh, I'll conclude with uh, a very long list of people that have been involved in trying to do this work. Uh, this is by far not a complete list. In fact, one of the things that's distinctly missing off this list is our distributors and the feedback that we had from them on improvements we can make. And I want to point out that uh, everybody in this list, plus a lot more, have had a lot of feedback and a lot of input on how this project has turned out. So, with that, I uh, thank you for your time. Uh, we'll take a look and see if we got any questions going here. I'll let Jim run that because he's better at it than I am. <laughs> yes. Um, if you would, uh, if you have any questions, please type them into the questions section on the toolbar. We do have some questions entered there already, so we'll uh, address those in the order that they came. Uh, the first question is, what is the required 120-volt AC single-phase power supply breaker amp Rating for the new Promix S system. S system amp requirement is 20 amps. Um, I will address one other issue if, while that, that brings something else to mind. The PC pump systems, because of the way we were running those and the increases in horsepower requirements, uh, we actually upgraded those systems to 220 volt requirements because the amp draw was becoming too large at 115 volt. Um, but to answer the question specifically on the S, that is still a 20, 20 amp requirement. We did try to keep that below a 20 amp level because it's a fairly common breaker for a lot of the applications we run into. Um, one other thing before I address a, a couple other questions, I know there's probably one big question that's blowing up in your mind is uh, when is this available? And you know we've given you a little taste of what we've done in this whole package. What you don't know is we're ready. We uh, as of Monday afternoon. We will be taking purchase orders. We'll have all of the release package information you need, and we can actually start processing POs right away. So uh, once that release package is in your hands and you've got all the part numbers, we're more than capable of accepting and processing orders. Um, second question we had on the list here, Sigma-1 pump option on S and M units. Is the, let's see, we have looked at a, a Sigma-1 pump option the number of times we had to use Sigma pumps in those installations is very rare. So we don't have a Sigma 1 pump specifically designed as far as a part number package. However, that system is capable of handling a Sigma 1 pump. What I would tell you is that would still be handled as a custom package, but it's a, it's a fairly easy modification of the existing new design. Um, next question was, is the chamber see-through now? Or was that just putting it in the presentation for uh, viewing pur purposes? It is not clear. It is still a solid PVC material. Um, we have a couple competitors that like to go with a clear chamber. But what we've also had is some feedback from customers saying that uh, they have UV issues. They get enough of ultraviolet light coming in those chambers that they get algae growth inside the chamber. And suddenly you can't see through it anyway because it coats up the inside of the chamber. We specifically go with a solid PVC material, um, partly for the UV protection. We, we still have a uh, clear um, static mixer on the discharge of those systems, so you have a good indication of, of what your polymer mix is looking like and making sure everything's working correctly. 
Um, can we give details of the jumpers in controls? Uh, that's real simple. The details on the jumpers in controls is there are no jumpers in controls. We've completely eliminated them. It's no longer a requirement for any operator to put a jumper into those systems to, uh, to have the controller to work correctly. That's, uh, that's actually one of the advantages of having the additional switches on the door. It, uh, it eliminates the need to have that feature in the, in the controller. Uh, the elimination of... Oh, okay. Um, previously what it was is a, a, some customers had to put a jumper in or remove one depending on how their configuration was set up if they wanted to, to bypass any kind of remote start capabilities. And that's simply handled by uh, dealing with the switch on the, uh, on the door. Uh, manual flush valves to bypass automatic flush controls. We've received positive customer feedback for changing, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Manual flush valves to bypass automatic flush controls. Um, we still have the, the flush capability is done automatically through the controller because it has a few features to control in that uh, to make sure that we're meeting all the requirements in the, in the flush. And it's timed in and tied in with uh, some of the operation of that system. So when the system is being shut down, it activates a, a flush automatically. Right now, we don't have a configuration where it's a strictly manual valve operated flush. But it can be a manually initiated flush if so desired. It's a, it's a switch that you can actually be done either via menu or by turning the, uh, the HOA switch from one of the operating positions to the off position and back. You can actually initiate the flush. The flush. Uh, has eQuote been updated with the new Polymer system products? eQuote has been populated with that information. It is not going to be activated until Monday, but it has got all the information available to have these new products ready to go. Um, we received positive customer feedback for changing from the Siemens to Blue White Pump. Thank you for, for, for resolving this issue. The old standard pump would be would rock back and forth. Blue White is secure and works as designed. That's basically some of the feedback that we've had. We, we have had pretty good luck with the Blue White pump. Um, I would be just as happy to see you guys use the Delta versions and use that prominent pump on there as well. So, um, again, that was feedback that we received from distribution and from end users. And we certainly listened to that and took it to heart and tried to make those, uh, those modifications as necessary. So, um, the part numbers, uh, so the part numbers for the updated systems will be different than the current systems. That is correct. We still will support the existing systems for particular applications that we need them. Uh, if a customer wants to complete duplicate of an existing system, we can actually supply those. Keep in mind, the existing, the Promix system as we know it today, is still an excellent system. It does a great job, and we have a lot of customers that are very happy with it. There's going to be some instances where a customer says, I've got one just like this. I want one just like it to go right next to it, the next system I'm going to run, and we can do that. Um, so we will also support existing systems via parts, all of those pieces of information that we need to have on hand. We're, we're going to support the legacy products as well. Um, will the old-style injection valves be available? For existing installed units, will customers be required to upgrade to the new twist lock injection valve design. New systems will be the new configurations. That new top plate configuration is specific to the newer design. It's not actually retrofitable back to the older, des older designs. Uh, so yes, we will support older design componentry um, to support customers that have those systems in the field. Uh, we actually had, a, in our previous one, we actually had somebody ask if we could retrofit a chamber. Theoretically, yes. Will it be economical to do so? Probably not. You're changing one of the, the most heavily machined components on the entire system. Plus, there'd be a lot of piping configurations as well. Uh, larger calibration column options. The, uh, the calibration columns are, are selected specific to the pumps that are on those systems, primarily for a minimum of one minute drawdown. Uh, we could feasibly add larger cal columns not a difficult thing to do, but I haven't had a lot of feedback that that was a critical issue in what we had for design. So if it's something that we need to look at, we can certainly throw it on to the uh, third generation. Um, 
or it can be a custom. Yeah, it can easily be a, uh, a custom package, but uh, it might be a little unusual to make a custom package just because of the cow column design. Um, can we get a copy of the PowerPoint? Absolutely. We've got uh, PowerPoint information that we can supply, and uh, we'll make this available so you can actually take this and put it in front of your customers. I'll ask a uh, follow-up question. Uh, I think it was Pam had asked about uh, different part numbers. Um, would, will there be a launch package that's going on on this? Yes. Monday, Monday you will see a launch package that comes out with all of the updated literature, which includes all of the part numbers. Um, it's got all of the supporting information for those, including uh, catalog pages as well. And uh, manuals will be complete. So you'll have all the information you need to be able to sit in front of a customer give them the information they need, and, uh, and get a system selected. Everything else in the background is set up, so we literally can take videos on Monday. Um, Mike Weber has been kind enough to ask me if there will be a spec included. And yes, there will. Uh, we've rewritten the CSI version specs for the municipal market, and uh, those will be available on Monday as well. Um, let's see, how will we receive as far as uh, the, I'm assuming the launch package. The launch package is going to go out, uh, there's going to be a notice via email with links onto the website for the, uh, for the additional information that you're looking for. So it's going to have the links onto the website of where we're going to have the cut sheets, all of the supporting documentation for this product. Um, We'll, we'll continue to monitor here for additional questions as they come in. But just to mention to everyone, this presentation will also be uh, available on our website. Uh, we record these webinars and, and post them there so you can watch them. If you want to direct them to a customer to let them see if it's, if it's helpful to them as well, uh, feel free to do that. The best way i found to find that list is if you go to prominent.us and in the search field at the top, just type the word video. It brings up uh, a list of all of those webinars that we've, we've recorded uh, over the past uh, pretty much a year, uh, at least half a year or so. Uh, we have quite a library of those stored there, so uh, please help yourself to those. Hopefully they're helpful to you. Uh, also, uh, we need ideas for future webinars. We, we would uh, like to answer some of the questions you have on some of our products. So. If you can think of other topics, we would uh, entertain working those into our schedule. We post that schedule also on prominent.us. We keep that up there about one month at a time. So uh, please pass any ideas that you have. Uh, if you think of a question and we don't get to it here today, uh, please let us know about that question. It is critical to us that we answer your questions. Uh, that, that's why we do these. That's why we want to share as much information as we can. Uh, also, keep in the back of your mind all of the support products around the ProMix. Uh, we can provide stirs for the neat polymer, stirs for, for the made down polymer, batch controls if, if someone does have a batch tank, and then pumps uh, out of that batch tank, whether it be a Dolco Flex or, or another type of pump, we have all of those available, uh, as well as that tank. You know, the, the tanks uh, we can supply. Drum dollies, we have part numbers for those. Drum stands, we have part numbers for those. Please let us know if there's anything else you can think of that we need to offer. So you have one person to cut a PO to. A lot of times people's hands are tied on how many POs are. So we want to be as convenient to you as we possibly can. So just let us know what you need, and we'll um, try to help you with all of those 